Hello, we are in Jakarta Convention Center in Indonesia to um, in a Facebook Live. This is the WordPress Freedom Day uh, uh, conference uh, in the, organized by UNESCO in Indonesia. And I'm here, um, I'm, my name is Mehdi Benchela, I'm working for the Freedom Expression uh, Division at UNESCO and I'm here to interview um, Anas Aremayo, uh, who is an undercover investigator, uh, investigating a uh, journalist from Ghana. Uh, and uh, he will uh, tell us a little bit on his work of, uh, as an investigator uh, journalist in, uh, in Africa and the rest of the world. So Anas um, Aremaya is, uh, is an award-winning uh, uh, journalist. He has uh, focused on human rights and, and corruption. He has become well known uh, for using his anonymity um, as a tool to, uh, to in his undercover journalistic work. One of his recent uh, projects um, in 2015 was a documentary film uh, which called Ghana in the Eyes of God, uh, which revealed uh, corruption within the Ghanaian judiciary system and no fewer than uh, 34 judges have been suspended pending investigation uh, from the authorities as a result of this, uh, uh, this um, uh, documentary. So, uh, Anas, your work deals a lot, as I said, on, on human rights issues and human trafficking, in particular on children and on corruption. And um, I would like to know uh, what made you become an investigative uh, journalist and a cover? Well, like you said, my name is Anas Arumiyaw Anas. I'm a Ghanaian investigative journalist. I've, I also work for most international media. I, I have things with... Um, Africa investigate Al Jazeera. I have done some work for the BBC, some for the CNN and some other um, international media outlets. I have been undercover and played many different roles. I have been undercover as a patient in a psychiatric hospital. I have been undercover as a prisoner in a prison. I have been undercover as a woman in um, uh, an orphanage where children were children's rights were abused. I've been undercover as a pastor. I've been under played many many roles undercover. My anonymity has always been my secret weapon, and I have always kept my face away from people because of the security implications that it has. But over the years, there are three things that I believe in that I have worked towards. My mantra in journalism is to name, shame, and jail the bad guys. So yes, like you mentioned, the judges' call, uh, uh, issue is one of them, and I've done a lot of human rights issues. My, my real focus when it comes to human rights has always been on children, and I've done a lot of human trafficking stories that have led to the rescue of so many children across the length and breadth of Africa. So, um, Anas, can you tell us uh, uh, where uh, were you inspired by the work of an investigative uh, journalist or a writer, another figure to... Uh... I, I think that my, my kind of journalism is a product of my society. Um, I, I am influenced more by the problems I see in the society than individuals. You see, in the West, journalism is done in a different way. I practice my journalism differently because, hey, uh, perhaps if you live in the US or you are in Canada and you break a story, it's easy. You are going to have the state security agencies take over the case because institutions in those places are very well developed. Now, back in Africa and better still third world countries, we know we have problems with our institutions. Our institutions are not properly developed. So what I do is after I have gathered the hardcore evidence with my hidden camera, I also go to the court of law and I testify to ensure that these bad guys are always put behind bars. Now, my kind of journalism has led to so many people being in jail. The human trafficking case, Chinese sex mafia, they are in jail for 45 years. As you heard about the judges, they currently, a lot of them have been sacked. We talk about um, the Nanakwisi Ajiman case where this man raped children as young as three. They are, he's in jail for 15 years. The uh, 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 Register General story is in jail for four years. The Tema Harbor story, they are in jail for 16 years, and Coco, many, many other. So, we are talking about realistic journalism that has impact on society. So, yes, in as much as I agree with my colleagues in the West that journalism should be done their way, I think that it differs in my part of the world because institutions are not strong 
And if I want to really make an impact on society, then I have to do journalism differently. So I'm motivated by the problems I have in the society. That's what tells me what to do with the piece of journalism or piece of work I pick up to do. So we are in Jakarta in the Convention Center uh, for the World Press Freedom Day. And uh, I'm interviewing live on Facebook uh, Anas uh, Arimayana, who is uh, an investigating uh, journalist uh, uh, working undercover in Africa and uh, in mainly. And um, so now I would like to know, um, how do you choose the subjects for your investigation? Well, largely the subject is about people. It's people-centered. When you watch my films on Al Jazeera, you realize that we have done something on the spell of the albino, where albino limbs are being chopped off in Tanzania and other places. We have also done the spirit child, which is a story between Ghana and uh, um, uh, Ivory, uh, um, Burkina Faso. We've done stories that hamper on stealing of food at the northern part of Ghana. We've done stories which are about, about baby selling in Nigeria. So my stories are dotted across the length and breadth of the African continent. And they are done as a result of the people's desperations, people's sentiments. So largely, before I choose a story, it must be people-centered. Um, how do you assess the risk that you take uh, to carry out these investigations? Uh, have you ever abandoned an investigation because you, you judged that the danger uh, of being exposed was too great? Well, I think that journalism is a very tough job. I mean, I keep on saying that it's a hot kitchen. If you don't have the nerve to stand the heat in the kitchen, you just get out. Now, stories that come with threats, death threats, I believe it's not peculiar to me. Many of my colleagues in Nigeria, many of you here, have all seen that it is a normal pattern that when we embark on any story, people threaten our lives, people get at us. Yes, yeah, stories that have led to near... I recall when I was a, a patient in the psychiatric hospital, it was a difficult story. Within the, next, the, the first five days that I was in, the drugs that I was taking in as a patient had some effect on my body. I also came into contact with a cocaine syndicate within the hospital. And whilst I kept on taking all these substances in my body, I became a bit uncomfortable. So I had to call for a parole and I had to leave for the, hosp the hospital to undergo detoxification before I could come back. So yes, that was a near shave where I nearly left the story. But after I went through the detox, I came back and I was able to do the story, which led to, as we speak now, the um, uh, uh, mental health bill in Ghana has been passed as a result of the story. The bad guys who were within the hospital, who were selling the cocaine and others were all fired. Some were put before court and all that. So, you see, journalism is not just about telling that story. We don't have time to tell stories to, for people to enjoy in their bedrooms. The essence of journalism is to lead to society progressing in a positive manner. So if we are not able to use our stories to point and shine light on society, then we are not doing the right thing. Um, Anas, I would like to ask you, what advice would you uh, give to a young journalist that would like to become uh, an investigative uh, journalist like you? I think that we should learn not to be dogmatic. Yes, it's true that schools like Harvard, Yale, Cornell and other schools, the Ivy League school have propounded very good theories on journalism. Yes, we believe in them, they are good, we want to be ethical, we want to be professional. But we should look at our society. I think that we should do what our society calls journalism. We cannot copy hook, line and sinker what is coming from the West. Every journalistic piece we do must be to the benefit of our society. And so, as young journalists, we ought to know that navigating this path of creating and doing journalism that helps society is not going to be easy. It will come with a death threat, it will come with some of us losing our lives, it will come with people getting injured. But when we are focused and we persevere, I am sure we will get there and our people will be happy with us. So we are in Jakarta, Indonesia for the World Press Freedom Day. Um, and uh, I'm interviewing uh, Mr. Anas, who is investigating journalist uh, from Ghana. Um, a last question. So, uh, your work as a journalist has exposed situation of injustice and corruption and human exploitation from government officials, police, criminal group, and businessmen. And 
what what impact it had in on your on your uh, vision of humanity uh, do do you have hope for the future i have strong hope because you see the new crop of journalists that are coming we are beginning to do things differently Look, I have read copiously, and I went to study law because I wanted to understand the intricacies, the similarities, and the synergies between journalism and the law. So as I speak, whenever I pick up a story and I go undercover, I know the exact in ingredients that I put together to ensure that the bad guys go to jail. I am saying that we can touch those frontiers. We can ask the main questions. Why is it that law enforcement agencies want to be on the left and journalism want to be on the right in the name of some so-called independence of the uh, 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 both law enforcement and the media? I think that it's about time we rethink this paradigm and realize that when the two institutions come together, we are, we are able to have a more positive impact. You see, there's no point in holding a story to our chests in the name of exclusivity and society burning. So journalists who hold his story, oh, this is exclusive, it's for my station, it's for my radio, it's for my TV. Whilst people are dying, what is the essence? When we can report this same thing, it doesn't mean that the law enforcement agencies are telling us what to do. It only means that we have better empathy for society and we need to save society until we all come together and realize that there is a national or a world cause rather than our myopic interest in our various media institutions we will not move together as one in society. In order to push these frontiers, we have to learn to put these synergies together and to combine when we have to, so that we can rid society of the bad guys and make society a better place for you and me. Well, thanks a lot for uh, your time and this interview. And we are broadcasting from uh, uh, Jakarta on Facebook Live and uh, that was uh, That's the end of this interview. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you.